Google stock, ticker symbol G-O-O-G-L. This company is just unreasonable. The treatment this company has had within the marketplace over the past few weeks, past few months, I simply can't understand it. When I see these persistent declines at the end of last week, down an additional 1.34%, five-day returns negative, 5.26%, one month returns down over 11%, and year-to-date, year-to-date down 24 0.89%. The more you look at it, the worse it gets. And you begin to think that as invest, perhaps as a new investor in this marketplace, analyzing large cap companies like Google, you may begin to think, well, I must be a bad investor. I must have made a mistake buying into Google. Clearly, the market is punishing my ignorance as an investor. And that's what a lot of investors think right now. A lot of investors have been exiting the marketplace, selling out of all their positions in some cases, because that's the sentiment they're getting. This, getting the sentiment that they're wrong, that they've made some sort of mistake, that they are not good investors. That's just not the case. The market in the short term is a voting machine. The market in the short term is not indicative of your quality as an investor. All it is indicative of is the emotion and sentiment within the marketplace. And the emotion, the sentiment around Google right now, the emotion and sentiment around the market more broadly is evidently very negative. But that does not mean you're a bad investor and does not mean that you cannot succeed over the long term in this marketplace. The sentiment around FANG more broadly has been very negative recently. Apple, Netflix, and other tech stocks are crumbling. The pain might not be over fear-mongering on the part of Barron's. Barron's saying, listen, things could be getting worse. These companies could be going down even more. But not buying into short-term news, but actually focusing on the underlying business, you begin to realize quite definitively, quite quickly, that these companies already pose a very, very advantageous buying opportunity, irrespective of whether or not Google goes down more over the next few months, there is already an immensely high quality buying opportunity present. Let me show you. When it comes to underlying financial strength, and I've say it time and time again, but there is nothing quite like Google. In terms of the stability and certainty associated with this company, no other company I can possibly think of quite matches Google. Cash on hand of 4.71 relative to their debt, that's their cash to debt ratio. It enables them to instantaneously pay off all the debt obligations almost five times over and still retain a massive amount of cash on hand to reinvest and build out their business going forward with the potential of a recession on the horizon. Recessionary pressures building up around the marketplace, fear proliferating everywhere. There is nothing more important than having a massive, consistent and durable amount of cash on hand. And that's exactly what Google has. It gives them the ability not only to endure that recession, to get through safely, but also succeed coming out of it. During that recession, they can opportunistically buy up companies at a discount, companies that have been brought down by the fear within the marketplace. That is the power afforded to them by that cash to debt ratio. But it's not just about their cash. Their financial stability is derived more from just their cash on hand. It's also their equity to assets. Equity to assets of 0.71 debt to equity fairly healthy at 0.11, debt to EBITDA of 0.28, and interest coverage of 233.35. Every statistic here, every numerical measure of this company's underlying financial strength is simply outstanding. And it is compounded by the underlying nature of their business model. Think about Google. Recession or not, irrespective of whether or not a recession comes along, are you going to stop using Google? Are you going to stop searching on Google daily? I know I'm not. I think the vast majority of Google users are not going to start using Google, irrespective of what's going on in the economy. And with that type of underlying business model, that type of underlying prevalence and strength of their brand, recession or not, this company is here to stay. This company is here to succeed. And you could argue, and quite aptly so, that in the event of a recession, less advertising will take place. Less digital advertising on the Google platforms, and thus... Perhaps reduced revenue, produced earnings per share, and that's understandable. I think that's likely to occur. But the fact of the matter is, in a recession, pretty much every company sees declining earnings. The fact of the matter is the most important thing is how that company navigates that recession and how they can thrive and reinvigorate growth coming out of that recessionary period. And given Google, given the underlying nature of the business, all the characteristics I've already shown you combined with world-class management in the form of Sundar Pichai, their CEO, Ruth Porat, the CFO, X Morgan Stanley. I think they have more than enough tenure, well enough experience to not only navigate that market environment, but come out swinging, succeed on the other side of this potentially recessionary period. 
And that's all reflected in the company's Altman score. An Altman score of 11.09, indicating a tremendous degree of underlying safety, stability, and quality in this company. The chances of going default in the next two, three years, virtually zero. This company is not going away. And it's not just the stability. It's not just the certainty associated with this asset. It is also the underlying profitability. Net margins of 27.57%. For every dollar of revenue that comes into their business, 27, 28% of that, pure profit. Now, you may say, you know, Lockie, those margins aren't quite as high as NVIDIA. Those margins aren't quite as high as someone like Texas Instruments or TSMC. Fact of the matter is, look at the market cap of this company. A $1.44 trillion dollar business. Maintaining net margins of that quality at this scale, it's almost unheard of. This company exudes an immense degree of not only underlying quality, but also profitability. Net margins, operating margins are the same story. Operating margins of 30.47%. Historically, industry basis, all these numbers are simply exceptional. And yes, we have seen degrading gross margins over time, gross margins steadily declining for the firm. But the fact of the matter is, look at the market cap. Think about the size of this organization and how rapidly it's grown over the past decade. Now think about, yes, there will be gross margin degradation, but look about look at how much those gross margins they're actually retaining in terms of net margins and operating margins. Almost half of their gross margins are translated to net margins. That's almost unseen, especially for a company of this scale. Very, very impressive. The more you look at Google, the more you analyze the fundamentals, the more you analyze the profitability, oftentimes... When you're analyzing a company on an in-depth level, the more you look at it, the more little nuanced mistakes you'll find, the more reasons not to buy a company you'll find. And yet when you analyze Google, as you analyze, as you go through all the different financial statistics, you only get more and more reasons to get excited about this business, financial strength, profitability, and it's all compounded by those returns on equity. Returns on equity of 30.6%, indicative not only of the underlying quality in this business, but also that degree of managerial acumen. The people running the company, organizing the capital within the business. And yes, we have seen persistent declines. Yes, we have seen the stock price continue to decline more and more and more over the past few months consistently. But this provides only one thing. For me as a value-oriented investor, a long-term oriented investor, and when I say long-term, I don't mean one, two years. I mean 10, 15, 20 years, that type of time period. That only provides me one thing a more advantageous entry point, a better price at which to buy this company, a company that I was already very, very fond of, is now even cheaper. There's a better opportunity present, and that's most indicative of that forward P.E. ratio, a current forward P.E. ratio for this company of only 19.19, current P.E. of 19.7. These numbers, they tell an outrageous story. If when you look at these numbers relative to the growth rates that have been perpetuating over the past three years, a three-year revenue growth rate of 25%, three-year EBITDA growth rate of 34.6%, it's easy to see why I'm so fond of this company on a valuation basis. Look at the differential between these extremely high, extremely consistent growth rates over the past three years and that very, very low PE ratio. The only growth being priced in by that PE ratio is a growth rate of around 10, 11% going forward over the next decade. And when you break down the numbers that Google has achieved over the past decade, it becomes very evident, very evident, very clear that there is a substantial degree of undervaluation still prevalent within this company based upon the declines at the end of last week, down around 1.34%, I believe, 1.34%. This company, let me show you. All you need to price in on this company right now, and this may vary with market open tomorrow, but all you need to price in this company at the current trading price is a growth rate of 10.48%. Growth rate of 10.48% over the next decade. That's all. That's the only growth that needs to take place. And you're paying fair value for this company. We get a price target of $2,177.79 relative to a current trading price that is almost identical. That's the reality. That is all the growth you need to price in to be paying a fair price for what is evidently a very, very wonderful company. Now, if you up that growth rate, if you get a little more bullish, a little more optimistic about this business... Look at the potential there. A margin of safety with a growth rate of 17%, which I believe is fairly reasonable taking into account the secular trends behind this company. With a growth rate of 17% going forward over the next decade, discount rate of 9%, earnings per share figure of $110 a share. Margin of safety of 36.24%. A fair value of $3,415 relative to the current trading price of 2178 massive upside potential. So the, the case with Google right now, the reality of Google right now, not only 
is this one of, if not the single highest quality company in the world? Tremendous profitability, tremendous financial strength, managerial acumen to the roof within this company. But now it's trading well, well below its intrinsic value. This is the type of opportunity we need to take. These aren't the type of opportunities that come along every week, every month. These are opportunities that sometimes only come along once in a decade, once every seven years or so. This is a major opportunity. But of course, conduct your own research before you make any moves in the stock market. But if you enjoyed this video, if you have to learn something more about my current thoughts on Google relative to the market more broadly, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or topic you'd like me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.